Hey there, Dexter Takis here. In this video, we're going to go over how to get Celery to work with Python 3.12 as well as Flask. This is not going to be a deep dive or getting started guide on using Celery from ground zero. This is really going to focus on some pain points that you may run into when using Python 3.12 and how to end up in a scenario where everything just works. So we're going to be looking at this example, Dockerized Flask app. I actually have it up and running here. Uh, I'll leave a link to that one in the description here. So I was updating another application to Python 3.12 and I first ran across the stack trace here with Combo, which is a third party dependency of Celery. And it's depending on using this cached property attribute, which is no longer available in Python 3.12. Now, the Kabu folks may fix this issue in the end, but you know, this was related to how I was creating my Celery app function. And uh, yeah, it was depending on a code path that was depending on this. So one thing that I did there was I just initialized my Celery app in a different way to not depend on this code path and everything works nicely. Now, thankfully, the Flask app documentation here is really good when it comes to getting set up with Celery. And a lot of the stuff that I use in my own application is derived from this documentation here. So now, you know, this is a little bit noisy here with type hints. So let's take a look here maybe at this function just in the example application where there is no type hints here. And um, yeah, so uh, I will just mention here this code that I had commented out here. This was the previous way that I was initializing my Celery application here, where, you know, basically we have this uh, context uh, task class here being just ferried into uh, Celery.task here and setting up this Celery application so that I can run a Celery worker and then everything kind of just worked. But yeah, this style of setting up this application is going to be needing to be changed just a little bit here. And the new version that we see down below is what we see. So in this case, all we're doing is creating a new uh, Flask task class here that we pass into Celery when we create Celery itself. And this sets things up so that all of your Celery tasks have access to things like your database connections and other things you may want to have access to within an app context. This is pretty nice here. And everything else, you know, is just boilerplate for getting Celery configured and set up here. And uh, all of this actually was taken pretty much straight from their documentation here. So to get things to work with Python 3.12, it's like, well, if you read the modern version of uh, Flask's documentation for Celery, then you would be good to go. Because I have this up and running in a pretty big application here with, uh, you know, over a dozen different uh, background tasks. We're using a beat server to do some reoccurring tasks, like for example, running tasks every day at midnight or whatever interval that you want here. But yeah, it was pretty nice. And actually it was a fun little reminder here too, just to, you know, revisit the documentation once in a while, because, you know, this type of function here is something you may just drop into one of your packages and just use it. And then you're going to use it next year and the year after and the year after that. And before you know it, well, you know, things get updated a bit and you don't really have any incentive to go back here and check it out until you run into a scenario where something doesn't work, which is, you know, this exact case here with Python 3.12. So I was actually pretty happy that uh, it was pretty fairly easy to get everything up and running. So yeah, it's going to do it for this video. Pretty quick one, just getting set up with uh, Celery and Flask. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.